Hello there, this is Scott, and uh, today is going to be another vlog video. So to start off then, just want to do a quick uh, update on uh, one of the reviews that I uploaded uh, a few days ago now, I think it was Wednesday or Friday, Wednesday I think it was actually, on the uh, OBS Cryos. Now in that, in that review I mentioned that uh, one negative was that the post holes were you know, very tiny, so you're probably going to struggle to get a sort of quite thick gauge wire through those holes. Uh, Typically, as soon as I upload a video, I get lots of people let me know that there's uh, been two new versions since the uh, the one that I actually reviewed, and the new version of the OBS Christ has addressed pretty much every sort of uh, slight negative that I mentioned in that review. So you know, if you do want to get a, uh, a like again, I'm going to say it again, um, it's a really nice atomizer. It performs great. Uh, it's made out of 304 grade stainless steel Pyrex tank. You get a spare tank with it as well. It's pretty easy to set up. And like I said, you know, performs an absolute treat, and it's around sort of twenty-five pounds as well, so it's a real bargain. And uh, you know, they have updated uh, the version now compared to what I've reviewed, and the version that uh, is available now has had all those sort of little niggles ironed out. So you know, at the same price, you're getting an even better atomizer. So um, just thought I'd better give you a quick update on the OBS Cryos. Okay, so I'm going to go back now and just go through some of the uh, like the questions that people have asked on the uh, the last vlog video. Now I'm going to start off with um, one from Victor Victor C. No smoke, uh, but I'm not actually going to answer it. And uh, I'll, I'll read it out first. He says, "Really nicely done, beautiful family scenery. Thanks for the sharing." On the vape note, could you please also share what your favourite setups are to date and what new features you would like to see in the upcoming technology? Now. I don't want to answer that one now because I think that would actually be a good um, sort of main section for a future vlog. And so what I can do is I can sort of show you my favourite sort of budget setups. If you're on a tight budget, you want something really nice and cheap, and I've got uh, quite a few of those because um, you know, like I said, I like buying a, a lot of stuff myself, and I like getting a, a bit of a bargain as well. And I'll go through uh, some of those. I can go through my favourite sort of uh, mechanical mod setups. Uh, favorite Genesis setups, favorite Dripper setups, uh, box mods, etc., etc. So we'll sort of show you one in uh, sort of each class, so to speak. So I'm not going to answer that one for the moment, but uh, that's something that I will uh, be doing in a, uh, a future vlog video. Uh, next one is from uh, Jason. Not too sure you pronounce his surname. Buchek, Buchik. Not too sure. But he says, uh, "Hey Scott, know you were a Proveri fan back in the day." Any chance on getting a radius review in the queue? Now the uh, the radius is uh, Provera's newest um, model, I suppose you could call it, um, which is sort of like a box mod. Now, like he, uh, like Jason mentioned, there, you know, I was, well, I still am a big fan of the uh, the Provera, and I've used that as my main sort of device, well, for for many years, really, ever since it first came out. And uh, with the Proveri, they're fantastic quality. If you buy one, you know, it is quite an expensive sort of initial outlay, but they do last and last and last. And they uh, you know, really are fantastic uh, um, regulated tube mods. Now, the thing is with me is that I'm not really into tube mods anymore. I really have sort of gone over to the side of box mods. For me, they just, uh, I think they look nicer. They've got a bit more character to them. Um, and there's a lot of sort of practical things with them as well. They tend to have a, like a bigger batteries or they can take you no know, dual batteries, for example, so you get a better battery life or more power. When you stand them up on a desk, you know, you don't knock them over half as much. <laughs> for me, that's one of the biggest uh, improvements uh, or biggest um, uh, advantages of a like a box mod, especially like a heavy box mod over a tube mod. Nothing more annoying than having like a set of tube mods lined up and then you sort of accidentally brush one and go over like a freaking set of dominoes. And that doesn't tend to happen as much with the uh, with the box mods. Now, I would normally be all over the radius like a rash, but there's just one thing that puts me off and that is the fact it only goes up to 40 watts. Now, to be fair, you know, 40 watts is pretty good for me. Like I said, one of my uh, main sort of uh, favorite sort of, uh, not to, to word, uh, electronic, variable wattage regulation boards, whatever you want to call it, or a chip, etc., is the DNA faulty. And obviously that only goes up to 40 watts, you know, and I can get by perfectly fine on that. But 
Now with those times when I do want to go a bit higher, it means I can't use that DNA 40 model. I've got to go and use a, an SX Mini M class or um, what other ones I've got now to go up to. I like the uh, the DNA 200 mods, which are which are out, out now. And so for me to actually sort of go and buy a radius, um, like for my own personal use, you know, like obviously if I bought one for my own a bit of Percy then I probably would end up sort of reviewing it anyway. But for me to go and spend out that sort of money, I'm not too sure how much it is. I think, you know, it's going to be, they're not going to be cheap, let's put it that way, but I'd imagine, at a guess, 150 quid, something like that. And I'm sure it's built perfectly. I'm sure it's a very nice device to... Sorry about that, that's my uh, Sky News alert going off. Um, I'm sure it's a, a very nice device. I'm sure it's built, you know, exquisitely well. But for 40 watts... You know, for me, it just seems a little bit on the old hat side of things, you know. So um, if they can come up with one that's even 60 watts, at least then it gives you a little bit more sort of extra room to play around with. And um, then if it was 60 watts, then I probably would you know, end up sort of buying one. But at the moment, with it, if it's only 40 watts, I've got plenty of other devices that can do 40 watts, and, you know, and they're very nice as well. So unfortunately... Um, I can't see a radius review happening anytime soon. I'm certainly not going to be uh, buying one until that uh, wattage has been increased to at least 60 watts. Otherwise, it's just going on. What will happen is I'll get it. I'll use it for a few days. think it's a nice. Pull it on the uh, on the sideboard and uh, probably just never touch it again. I'll go into something else like the DNA 200 mods, which are out now, you know, which are cheaper as well. So, um, yeah, so probably not going to be a radius review anytime soon. And that's not a slight on the Provary or Provape as a company. It's just my own sort of personal preference. You know, 40 watts just um, just isn't going to cut it for that sort of uh, that sort of price range for me personally anyway. Okay, so the next one was from Alan Wong. And I'm pretty certain I met Alan at uh, Vape Fest 2011, I think it was. Very nice chat. And uh, actually, if it's the same uh, guy that I'm thinking of, I'm pretty certain it is. Uh, he says he'd like to see an update on the flavour concentrates I purchased from Everything E Liquid. Also, Rashid Aziz84 also said, you know, if you let us know how I got on with that yogurt concentrate. Now, I've not used the uh, the yogurt one yet. I was a little bit put off by that because uh, when you smell it, it, it does actually smell of vomit. Um, so, you know, it doesn't particularly make you want to, uh, you know, quickly go up and and make a bottle of it, but you know, I will try that one soon though. Um, I haven't tried all of them. The ones I have done are the donut. Now the donut, it's a nice flavor. <laughs> it's nothing like donut, I mean, like it's a mixture of sort of coconut and almond. That's what I get out of it anyway. And uh, absolutely nothing like donuts. And I was quite disappointed about that because uh, when I saw a donut flavoring, I had sort of visions of uh, South End Pier back in my sort of uh, in my youth, we used to have a little donut shop uh, underneath the pier, and they would make them fresh air, and that was absolutely freaking gorgeous. They were, uh, but unfortunately, they don't, don't taste anything like the donuts you get under the pier at South End. They, for some reason, it tastes a bit like uh, coconuts and almond. But it's not a bad flavour, and, that, and that's quite a compliment for me because I hate almonds. So the fact that it does taste a bit like almond, and I'm still saying it tastes quite nice, you know, is a big compliment. But in my opinion, nothing like, uh, at least not like. Donuts that I'm expecting anyway. The other one I tried was the mint choc chip, and that does taste very much like mint choc chip. Um, you know, if you like that sort of uh, mint choc chip ice cream, then uh, I'm sure you'd be really happy with that one. I have tried uh, the other one as well. I can't quite remember, but you know, I bought about I think there's about nine flavors there, and I've just not had a chance to sort of go through all of them yet. The only ones I've definitely done is the donut. Uh, and the uh, the mint chop chip and uh, like I said the mint chop chip does actually taste like mint chop chip. I don't know how many times I can say that but it does. Uh, but you know I will go through the other ones uh, in due course. Then. Um, next one is from Lewis. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> it's from Lewis Prout. And he says uh, just a quick question. Did I hear right when you say you uh, bulk up your e liquid? Uh, by putting 30 mil pre-made bottle into 100 mil of VG. If so, would it dilute the nicotine? And how badly would it dilute the flavour? Uh, keep the rocks coming, and I will do. Um, well, you, you was close. Uh, I think Louis or Lewis. Um, 
I don't put a 30ml bottle into a 100ml of VG. What I do is I get an empty 100ml bottle. I get one of my bottles of uh, Titan Fluid Tobacco, 18 milligram strength, squirt the whole lot into that uh, empty 100ml bottle, then fill the rest up with uh, vegetable glycerin. So that'd be sort of 70 mils worth of uh, VG. Now, uh, he asks, you know, does that obviously reduce the nicotine and reduce the flavor? And yes, it does on both counts. Now with the flavor, um, it does reduce it, but not by much. And the actual flavor is still, it's, it's actually a really nice flavor as well. So for me, it really is quite a uh, quite a bonus because so I can all, you know, turn a 30 ml bottle into a 100 ml bottle. And obviously it'll last me three times as long. Now with regard to the nicotine, again, yes, it does obviously reduce the nicotine. I'm not gonna lie and say, it's going to be exactly this, uh, reduced by this amount because uh, I'm sure there's other factors involved. But uh, uh, in my logic, anyway, in my brain, I should be getting around six milligram strength. If I'm diluting it by three, 18 divided by three, six, yeah, I just think they get six milligram strength. Um, that's probably totally inaccurate, and I'm probably going to get lots of people saying, you're a fucking idiot, you know, or something like that. But, you know, um, as far as I'm aware, it's going to definitely be reducing it. Um, I'm going to take a guess and say it's going to be around sort of six milligram strength. Now, obviously, six milligram is quite a difference to 18 milligram, but uh, you know, I do vape six milligram, six million, six milligram strength e liquid now. I used to always vape 18 milligram strength for well, six and a half years. I've been vaping 18 and a half milligram strength, and the last sort of six months, um, it's just just, I think with the way that the vaping has actually changed now, with the old cloud chasing coming along, like you tend to end up reviewing more sort of uh, atomizers that are designed for cloud chasing. And um, it is a nicer experience if you do lower your nicotine because you don't end up sort of uh, feeling a little bit queasy at the end of recording a uh, review or something like that, you know. If I was just sort of sitting in my own, on my own, not in my house, just sort of, you know, chilling out, watching the film, having a vape, I can quite happily cloud chase 18 milligram strength V liquid and not feel any sort of a uh, adverse effect but when you're recording a review, a review and you sit in the room it's gradually getting filled up with more and more vapor and you're doing tote after tote after tote and you're looking at bright lights which are staring right at you and you're trying to concentrate on the lens of the camera as well i would i would admit i've had quite a few funny funny turns by the end of the uh, review and gone straight over to the sink and uh and throwing me cups up basically so in the end i thought well Let's try and reduce it and see what happens. And I've reduced it down to six milligram strength. I still don't get any sort of cravings or anything like that. You know, I can vape exactly how I did when I was vaping at 18 milligram strength. So I thought, well, it makes sense to me to just sort of stick with six milligram. So uh, yes, it does obviously reduce the flavor a little bit, but it's still quite a nice flavor. And it does uh, reduce your nicotine strength. But for me, that works out, you know, quite a bonus because uh, I like vaping the lower, length, lower strength nicotine uh, e-liquids anyway. And then up yesterday, I actually ordered uh, 20 30 ml bottles of my tight fluid tobacco because so I used up my last one yesterday to make up a new 100 ml bottle. And uh, so I'm going to get 20 of those through the post. So it's uh, 20 for so that'd be, I think I can make about sort of two litres worth of e liquid if my mass is correct. Yeah, two litres worth of tight fluid tobacco. So uh, that should be me sorted for the next uh, couple of weeks, something like that. Uh, now the last one uh, isn't so much uh, a question, <laughs> more of a statement really, and it's from uh, Michael Lucenti, again not too sure if that's uh, pronounced correctly, but Michael Lucenti, and he says, you look like the Welsh version of Trent Reznor from Nine Inch Nails. Now, for starters, I'm not actually Welsh, my family isn't Welsh either, we've always lived in sort of East London, Essex area, it's just that my mum moved up to Wales uh, when I was 18 years old, and obviously in that last vlog video, I went up to Wales to see her, but uh, that doesn't actually make me Welsh, I am uh, English. Uh, secondly, I've never actually heard, uh, I've heard of Nine Inch Nails, but I've never heard of Trent Reznor. And I do quite often get people uh, uh, leaving comments saying you look like this person, you look like that person. Sometimes they're quite complimentary, other times not so much, but uh, this uh, Trent Reznor, now I've got an image here, so I don't personally think I look anything like him at all. And uh, he's got a bit of a pat going on. If I sort of bite on the insides of my cheeks, I'll give myself a nice uh, defined jawbone. I'll look into the camera and try and imitate it with a pat. Do I look like him? I'm not too sure. But uh, Michael Lucenti definitely thinks I do. Okay, so... Um, 
what have I been up to? Uh, now, again, in the last vlog video, I sort of showed you a nice uh, sort of little short film of my trip up to Wales to see my mum. And uh, if I do things like that, you know, I'm, I'm more than happy to make videos because it's actually sort of something a little bit different to, to the norm and a little bit exciting. But, uh, you know, this week I haven't really sort of done anything of, of any note. I'm just uh, the same as any of you guys, you know, just doing the same sort of mundane things you do when you... Uh, become in your 40s. Um, the only sort of vaguely, slightly exciting thing I've done was uh, was yesterday, and that is uh, we got some fireworks. Because uh, in the old house that uh, we lived in, it's a nice house, but the garden was really tiny. And uh, you know, every year, um, my youngest daughter, Nikki, will say, oh, can we get fireworks, can we get fireworks? And I'll be saying no, it was like, you know, it's just not safe to do it out there. And um, but then when we moved to the new house, we sort of said, right, okay, look, you know, we've got a bigger garden now, so we definitely get, like, the fireworks. And then November the 5th came, um, and my wife was meant to sort of come home with fireworks, and she completely forgot. And then the weekend came, and we was going to do it, but then I was actually chucking it down in the rain, so we thought we'd sod that. And then every day since, she was going, you're going to get fireworks, going to get fireworks. And I was thinking, well, no one's going to actually sort of sell them now, because like, fireworks day was, like, well, like 11 days ago. But... Um, we found a little garden centre yesterday and they actually had a lot of massive display of fireworks in there. So we bought just a few little things, a um, couple of them, I think it's like firework cakes, I think that's what they call them, where you just light it and it gives you like a little mini display. But like, the fuse on the fire, unless I, unless I was meant to put it out or something, but the fuse on the fireworks is that like no sort of two centimetres, <laughs> two centimetres long. So I was standing there with my wife, she's holding the torch, I can see what I'm doing. I said, well, no. Lit it and all of a sudden it almost all went off, stuck going off immediately. And me and my wife were sprinting back to ourselves. Um, but the fireworks were good. I didn't actually sort of take any footage of the fireworks, but I did um, get my camera out and just uh, take a little video of the kids using their sparklers. But uh, like I said, that literally was the highlight of the week, you know, uh, pretty boring stuff. So, you know, if I've done something exciting, then I'll gladly uh, show you guys it. If I haven't done any, anything exciting, then, um, you know, there's, well, there's nothing to show you basically. I'm just going to have a uh, quick vape while I uh, compose my thoughts. And a little drink. Now, um, in sort of me past videos I've asked people to give me suggestions for topics and things to uh, talk about and I've had some really good ones and they've all been put in like a little folder so I can sort of do them for future videos but uh, I thought for this vlog and it should be uh, what's the word practical logical for me to actually sort of go back to uh, to my beginning and tell you how I first sort of started smoking uh, and then obviously sort of transitioned into uh, into vaping and then from vaping into sort of doing the reviews and and, and being where I am at, the, at this moment in time. Because I thought if I do something like that, you know, like a year down the line, and it's going to be like, why don't you do this slide at the start? It would have made more sense for me to sort of tell you about how I got into all this, uh, you know, at the sort of beginning of these sort of vlog videos. So if you don't mind, that is a story that I sort of uh, I will share with you now and hopefully it'll be of a... Uh, some sort of vague interest. Now, I think, well, I first sort of started smoking properly when I was 15, but prior to that, I had had the sort of uh, occasional toke on a cigarette. Like, I remember me and my mates, uh, like when we was probably about like 11, 12 years old, something like that, we used to sort of, uh, after school, get on our bikes and go out for a ride in the country and just sort of go down the country lanes and piss about in the, like, the farmer's fields and do that sort of stuff. And there's this one road, uh, Pike Lane, which sort of took you out to the middle of nowhere. And if you ever rode your bike down Pike Lane, you're always guaranteed to find two things. One would be a, a box containing one cigarette, which obviously somebody has either dropped or thrown out the window of the car. And the other thing you'd always guarantee to be found, uh, to guarantee to find, would be a ripped out page from a porno magazine. So obviously when you're 11 years old, you're finding cigarettes and you're finding porn, you know, it's absolutely blinding. And I, okay, I even remember, like, when I was back at that age, thinking, you know, why is there just this one random page here in, like, a, in a one box, you know, like, you know, a mile down the road with just, like, one cigarette in, you know? Do people just sort of think, oh, I don't want that last cigarette, and just sort of chuck it out the window as they're driving? Or people sort of 
looking at all magazine as they're sort of driving down this country lane and thinking, no, I don't like that page, just rip that out and throw that out of the window. It was really strange, but you know, every time I went down there, you always found one ripped out page from a porno and um, and one box which normally had like a, like a cigarette or sometimes two cigarettes in it. And you know, if we got those, a lot of the time, because I was really very young, we just used to sort of hold them in our fingers and pretend we were smoking, but every now and again we would uh, ride back to where a little local shop was, buy a box of uh, matches and then sort of you know, just sort of puff on it basically. But when I very first properly started smoking is when I was 15, I just left school and I'd uh, started my engineering apprenticeship. And uh, I was obviously like the youngest sort of um, person there basically, like with all the older sort of properly qualified engineers. And every one of them smoked cigarettes. And there's this one guy, I can't remember what his name was now, but uh, he used to always blow the smoke rings and I used to sort of sit there on my on my break, and I was really fascinated by it. I just I used to watch him, and every time he took a drag, that's it. He would bust out a few rings, and uh, and that's what basically got me started. And eventually, you know, I went home, and my nan at that time used to smoke, and uh, she always used to keep a ten B and H in a dressing gown pocket in the uh, in the to hang up on the toilet door. And I remember sort of going in there and uh, pinching one of her cigarettes and uh, and the lighter, and then going upstairs to my bedroom, sort of hanging out the bedroom window as far as I could. Uh, and try, having a cigarette to try and do the, uh, the smoke rings and I couldn't do it and I went and got another one <laughs> pretty much done of old box and um, and that's where it started from unfortunately you know it's just something as stupid as that me sort of uh, being fascinated by the smoke rings that's how I actually got it started so that's also um, part of the reason why I tend to do a lot of smoke rings in my uh, in my vaping videos it's just uh, an old habit basically and then obviously um, as I sort of uh, went through uh, college doing my apprenticeship, you know, I went to uh, uh, an actual college, should I say, and met other people, like doing like block release and whatever. So you do like X amount of months actually at uh, like the, the company, sort of working on you know, like lifts and machinery and things like that. Then the rest of the time you'd be at college getting your qualifications. And when I was at college, I met other people who were sort of like my, my own sort of age. And, um, and obviously, again, like they all smoked as well. So, you know, before you know it, you know, you're doing, you know, one or two a day to try and do a few smoke rings so sort of smoking 20 plus a day then 30 a day and i think at the most i ever sort of smoked was probably around sort of uh, 40 a day really so <clears throat> you know i was quite a heavy smoker uh then obviously over the years i did try to uh quit many uh on many occasions mainly uh, not for health reasons because when you're young you, you feel like you're invincible anyway but uh my main reason was uh financially you know i never really sort of felt any um negative effects of smoking even right up to the point where i sort of managed to sort of completely stop and switched over to vaping and i think that was sort of partially because i was a uh, very sort of um very active uh, with regards to sports i mean like uh for a large section of my life probably about 17 years uh it was pretty much completely and utterly dedicated to ice hockey I actually played a semi-professional and so like three nights of the week every tuesday wednesday and thursday i'll be um down the ice rink training and then every Saturday and Sunday, I'll be sort of touring up and down the country and, uh, and playing ice hockey. And even when I was actually playing ice hockey, you know, every time, you know, we had the, uh, the gap between each period, you know, I'll be sitting on the bench outside after the team talk with a bottle of water in one hand and a fag in the other, you know. Um, yeah, crazy days they were, but, you know, really excellent days as well. And so, like, you know, I was really sporting. And once I sort of, um, I basically had a really bad accident at work and, um, done a lot of damage to my hand and being a net mind I needed to have really good sort of uh, use of my hand as well and I was out for a long period of time and by the time I sort of was good enough to go back to playing again I would sort of lost my place in the team and had to sort of work on my way back up and it just went out the window then after that I started doing a bit of boxing and also playing a lot of uh, Sunday league football so all the time I was quite sort of sporty and, uh, and active basically so I think that helped us sort of combat any sort of negative effects of smoking but uh as time grew on, you know, I knew that I did have to sort of give up, and so I went through the uh, the patches, the chewing gum, um, what else was there, like a, a squirt thing you put in your mouth, and nothing worked. I mean, like, I couldn't really go longer than a few hours without wanting a cigarette, you know, that's really terrible as well, really. The closest I ever came, or the longest I ever managed to go, was after reading a book called um, The Easy Way to Stop Smoking by Alan Carr. And uh, even though it didn't actually sort of help me to completely stop smoking at that time, it's a um, it's an amazing book because it really does go through all the psycholo uh, all the psychology 
of smoking and if you've got when you're a smoker and people say oh, you need to stop people say you know i can't stop it because you know i need it because i'm under stress and it really does every, everything that you can think of that a smoker would say as a reason not to stop alan carr has a completely um has a way of uh making you realize that it's the most stupid thing you could say and it works completely opposite for example you know people who say oh, i smoke because i'm stressed well how does a non-smoker Deal with stress. Why doesn't a non-smoker suddenly just pick up a cigarette? And just little things like that. It really does sort of make you make you think uh, psychologically about the actual um, about actually smoking. So it's a fantastic book, and it really did uh, help me. And even now, I still sort of uh, resort back to some of the things he sort of mentioned in that book. You know, really good. Um, but I managed to go 24 hours without a cigarette. Now, 24 hours without a cigarette, a lot of people think that is pathetic, and it is pathetic. There's no two ways about it. But for me. Being a heavy smoker, really dependent on the cigarettes, and never imagined in my life without a cigarette in my hand. You know, going 24 hours quite comfortably as well without a cigarette. You know, it was, it was an amazing achievement. But um, now the next day, I thought, well, I'll just have that one, and then as soon as you just have that one, and see, so back to sort of full blown smoking. And then um, my dad, he said to me, you know, he was listening to a um, a radio show on uh, LBC, something like that. And uh, he said, oh, yeah, they're talking about these uh, electronic cigarettes. Now, bear in mind, this is back in, I think he first mentioned them to me in 2007. So, you know, we're going back, you know, quite a long time now, eight years now. And uh, and he said, yeah, why, why don't you sort of consider trying those? Because like, my dad actually hates smoking with a passion. And so he, every time I met up with him, he'd just be, oh, you're still smoking, you're still smoking. And he used to get a lot your tits. But yeah, he really hated smoking. And he's always trying to sort of uh, get me to uh, to stop, basically. And he mentioned about the electronic cigarettes. And I remember at the time saying, oh, that sounds really pathetic. And he was going to smoke an electronic cigarette. And I completely sort of dismissed it. And then it was probably around you know, maybe eight or nine months later, no, maybe not, maybe about six, six months later, something like that, I um, I was on Google and all of a sudden I just suddenly remembered, oh, electronic cigarettes. I thought, well, let's just have a quick look and see what that is. So I typed in electronic cigarettes and um, I found a YouTube video. Now at this time, YouTube wasn't particularly well known and uh, it wasn't, there was hardly any sort of electronic cigarette videos on YouTube at that time. But one particular one was of a, uh, a young Chinese guy uh, with a little cigar like, and he's obviously in like a factory where they make them. And um, there was no talking, it's just him vaping. And he, you know, he took a long drag, and I'm watching him take this long drag and expecting sort of not a lot else to happen after that. And he took it out of his gob and exhaled like a really sort of nice amount of vapor, certainly comparable to like a, like a real cigarette. And I was absolutely blown away, you know, for me, it's like my eyes were literally popping out of my head. I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. I thought, that actually looks like real cigarette smoke. You know, the thing he's holding looks quite like a cigarette. And, you know, it's it just like absolutely mind blowing. And then from that moment onwards, I just thought, Do you know what, this is going to get me off these fucking cigarettes. And then I started doing a bit of research and uh, trying to find places that sold them. Because again, at that time, there's hardly any suppliers that sold them. There's a few cut on eBay. And uh, and a few sort of online. I think I, the uh, the first one I got was a DS a DSE one hundred and three uh, from um, Intellisig.com, and uh, so they've been you know, going around for a long time now as well. Intellisig, and I got that, and I got it home, and I remember standing in my kitchen with my wife, and I took it out the, uh, the packaging. I didn't bother charging. I was just literally so excited. I just couldn't wait to try, it. and I put the. Uh, the little atomizer screwed out onto it and I got my cartridge and slid that over the top, took the drag and as soon as I sort of exhaled, I just thought this is it, you know, this is going to really help me sort of uh, to get off the cigarettes. Uh, the only thing is with that first sort of DSC 103, at that time, you know, psychologically for me, it had to be exactly the same size as a cigarette. It had to look, you know, exactly like a cigarette. It needed to feel like one, everything about it because I was very much was psychologically in the mindset of it's got to be a cigarette or it's not going to work. And the DSC 103 sort of looked like a cigarette, but it was a little bit larger. And so I thought, you no, know, I've been using it for about sort of 10 minutes. I thought, this is going to work, but I need something that's more cigarette-like. And I've done a little bit of uh, research and found another company called Mirage Cigarettes. I looked on their website and uh, see they had a, um, I can't remember what it's called, I think they just used to call it the Mirage actually. And I bought one of those, and uh, sorry, just in the dry throat here. 
yeah, and so I, I bought one of those uh, starter kits, and um, and that was it. You know, it, it sort of set me on the on the right path when I was opening this tiny little battery, probably like ninety milliamp hour battery, so last about like you know ten minutes if that. Uh, tiny pathetic little cartridges that used to hold, I think something like 0.2 milliliters of e-liquid, and you'd have to sort of get a little. Well, you know, this is before even e-liquid was available. Actually, thinking about it. You couldn't even buy e-liquid separately, that's how long ago this was. And so, you know, you had to buy the cartridges, and when they went dry, and that was it, no tough shit, put it in the bin and go and grab another one, basically. And I remember buying a lot of the tobacco ones and a load of the menthol ones, and uh, for me, it was, it was literally, it was mind-blowing. It really was, you know, absolutely amazing to be able to uh, stand there in my house with something that looked like a cigarette, it tasted the tobacco ones didn't taste like a cigarette, but the menthol ones I felt did taste quite like a menthol cigarette. So I was mainly vaping the menthol ones there. And like I said, you know, for me, it was absolutely fantastic. And I, you know, automatically sort of fell in love with vaping now. Now, uh, after a little while, I started sort of uh, joining, uh, well, I say the forums. There's again, I think there's only no, there's two forums. I can't remember, one of them's closed down now, but uh, I can't remember what that one was called. But uh, the main one was the uh, ECF or Electronic Cigarette Forum. And at that time, excuse me, I'm going to burp. No, I'm not. Oh, I've got a bit of trap wind, sorry. <laughs> I try and cut that bit out, no. Um, and at the time, ECF, when I joined, I think there was 200 members. Whereas now, let's have a quick look, actually. I think this is going to come on. Whereas now, I think it's probably got about 20 million now. Yes, I don't think it will actually show me how many members there are here. Uh, I can't see it, but um, if I find out, then I'll stick a little uh, note up there. But like I said, at the time when I joined, uh, there was, I think there was around sort of 200 forum members, whereas now, and I'd imagine it's well over 100,000, so it just shows you how much uh, vaping has increased over the last sort of uh, X amount of years. And I just sort of started getting a little bit involved and sort of trying to learn a little bit more about what few models there were available, which were literally none. No, well, I say none, obviously there were some. There's probably, you know, a handful of little cigar light kits, and then we had this slightly larger, or the larger version models, which could the DSC 801s. And uh, I ended up uh, going along to the Mirage website again, and I see they had their, like, their new uh, model in, uh, another cigar like, but they'd labeled it as a, a like the selling point was, you know, I always remember like in great big sort of letters above like the uh, like the advert, red light, green light technology. And it's like, wow, red light, green light technology. What, is, what does this mean? This sounds amazing. And what it basically was is that it came with two batteries. Uh, one battery, the end lit up red, and on the other battery, it lit up uh, green. And that was the red light, green light technology. But you know, to me at that time, it was like amazing. So. I bought that kit and I remember going on to the uh, ECF forum and uh, starting a post and saying, has anybody else uh, you know, heard of the um, the Mirage, whatever model it was there, and it's a uh, red light, green light technology. And you know, again, even though it's just a, a different color LED on each of the batteries, people were really impressed by it. It's going, wow, that's brilliant, you know, really amazing stuff. And you know, when you look at it compared to today's sort of things, you know, the difference between uh, night and day, you know, we was excited about red or, or green LEDs, whereas now we're excited about, you know, DNA 200 mods that can do 200 watts and temperature control and that sort of stuff. So it's just amazing how it has sort of uh, transformed over the years. But um, yeah, like I said, I posted about this uh, new Mirage that I brought and sort of saying, has anybody else got one? And everyone's saying, I've never heard of that. And there's a lady called Kate. Um, her forum avatar was like a, a nun vaping a cigar. And I'm sure a lot of people will know Kate. I'm not too sure whether that's her real name or just a, like a online identity. I think she's still involved uh, in electronic cigarettes and vaping in, in some sort of capacity. Last, thing, last time I heard of her, she was very much into these sort of ad advocacy uh, side of things. And I'm going to assume she still is now. But she replied on that, uh, on that thread to say, oh, you know, can you do a review for us or write a review? I thought, yeah, that's fine, you know, so I thought, well, you know, I'll use it for a little bit, and then I'll just go and write out my thoughts. And um, I'm a, I'm personally, I've got, I'm very good at thinking what I want to write out, but I can never be asked. I hate writing, like, you know, typing out things or writing out with my hand. It's just, uh, it's just, just, it's just not me. 
And so I started trying to write this uh, review out and I kept on sort of doing a few lines. I think, oh, that sounds bollocks, you know, I don't want to say that, and no, oh, that's wanky. And then I thought, well, there's got to be another way. And I remembered that uh, I'd seen that young kid on YouTube, like, you know, vaping this uh, electronic cigarette. And I thought, well, actually, you know, why don't I use that YouTube website? And then um, I'll just sort of sit with me with my camera and record it and just upload it to that. That way I don't have to sort of type out anything. And that is pretty much you know, how it started because um, it was just simpler for me to record a, a review like on, or a video rather than writing it out, you know. And if I'd been a little bit more, um, if I'd a little bit, what's the word? Uh, if I could have been asked a little bit more, you know, I probably wouldn't be sitting here doing the vlog at the moment. I'd probably have just written up that one review and then that'll be it. I'd uh, sort of fade into uh, obscurity, really, you know. But it's just that, the fact that I couldn't be asked to write a review, I thought, oh, this would be easy. I'll, I'll upload a little video, put it on that YouTube website, and then, uh, then that'll be it. Now, at the time when I uploaded my first ever review, it was December uh, 2008. There wasn't any other reviewers there. There was two, well, there was two other guys. One was called... Rat in the Hat, that was his sort of a username, and the other guy was Leafer. There may have been others, but uh, I certainly didn't notice them at the time anyway. You know, if you top you like review, literally you get like, like that many, because uh, this just wasn't anybody doing it at the time. By contrast today, I think the last time I counted, there was about sort of 53,000 reviews. I'm, I'm joking about that, of course, but uh, you know, literally everyone's a reviewer these days. It's like YouTube is just absolutely sort of full of them, but back then, it was bug of all, you know. So, um, I think that's all helped me really because because there wasn't that many videos around, you know, the video did sort of get quite a bit of attention quite quickly and I just wasn't expecting it at all. And people started saying, oh, you know, nice of you, can you do another one? And then can you do another one, can you do another one? And then from that point onwards, I've just sort of ended up here really. So I never actually intended to become a reviewer. I uploaded that first video out of sheer laziness to be quite honest, but uh, that is uh, pretty much how I started and, and how I got to... Uh, to this point today. That went on for an exceedingly long time, that segment. I wasn't expecting that at all. I thought I'd just be talking here for a couple of minutes, but uh, you start chatting and sometimes you just sort of get a little bit carried away. I'm just going to another quick break. Okay, so um, I'm not going to sort of take up too much more of your time, just very quickly, like I've got on my little list of notes here, talk about something you've got in the post, and this is something I've got in the post, which uh, I'm sure everybody's heard of this now, which is the, um, I think it's pronounced Rulo, Rulo, something like that, R-E-U-L-E-A-U-X by uh, Wismec. Now, uh, I purchased this from Totally Wicked, um, it came like uh, with uh, the batteries. Where is it? How much did I pay for it? Du, 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 du. Actually, I pre ordered it, so it's probably a little bit further back. Yeah, I paid, uh, including, I paid for the uh, UK special delivery, which was six ninety nine, and I've got uh, the Rulo. It came with three batteries, uh, three Sony VTC4s. And a total, including the shipping, uh, was 156 pounds and 98 pence. So you know, not cheap. And also uh, throwing a free 10 ml bottle of Elix when I went with the retro sherbet lemon. So you know, 156 nicker. That's uh, nicker, um, or 156 pounds, 98 pence. And it is you no know, quite expensive. You are getting free batteries with that as well. And somebody did actually point out to me the other day that it's a bit unfair that totally wicked were forcing you to buy free batteries as well because uh, there wasn't actually a um an option to not choose the batteries and obviously uh keep the price a little bit lower now at the time i didn't sort of i didn't mind but i thought well i'm quite happy to have sort of three new batteries as well so it seemed to make sense to sort of buy all together and now i've got three batteries that i can sort of keep dedicated to this device because um because you are using free batteries it's a good idea to sort of uh, get them all married up together but yeah you know a little bit naughty on uh tw they probably could have uh made it cheaper minus the batteries because there are going to be a lot of people who don't want to buy three extra batteries as well so probably missed out on a few sales as well now you know it's a relatively expensive device but i've been extremely happy with it though it feels really nicely made nice and uh, nice and solid 
Uh, I'm loving the uh, the DNA 200 electronics. Uh, obviously, you can, I can't remember what the lowest wattage is. Let's have a quick look. But um, you can go as low as... Oh, one watt. <laughs> so there's, you can't go much lower. You can go one watt all the way up to uh, 200 watts. And um, it just performs great. Got a lovely screen on the uh, the DNA 200 as well. The only thing I will say, sort of slightly negative with the DNA 200, but I think I can actually change this as well. Is that when you want to change your, uh, your like your wattage setting, you press like the up or down button. You hold it down, and it starts off slow and it goes a little bit faster. And uh, but then it goes from like a little bit faster to like warp speed. It's so, like you know you get to almost where you want to be. And you just about to sort of take your finger off, and all of a sudden you're like you're 10 watts over. Uh, so that is a little bit frustrating, but I think there is a set you can change in the uh, like the EEPROM software to actually uh, sort that out. So I'll probably do that in the future. But you know, overall, though, I've been um, been quite impressed with it, really. It's like I said, a very well made device, quite nice looking as well. And the reason why I am sort of interested in this, I've done a review on the Trey Equi uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was, which is a sort of mechanical mod. Which has a sort of quite a sort of similar design, and somebody there sort of mentioned, oh, you know, you may be interested in the uh, the uh, the Rulo by Wismet because that actually does look quite similar and it does have the uh, the, like, the variable wattage as well, which is what I said in that Trey Equi uh, review. Uh, it'd be nice to have this, but um, with sort of regulated electronics in it. I'm just using that at the moment. It's just uh, 40 watts. I'm using it with a. Uh, this came in for review actually, a Aqua Fox um, by Futon, I think it was, was it? It was quite a um, well known modder, if I recall correctly, yeah, Futon. Um, now, I'm assuming that he sort of um, he's, uh, like, sort of got in contact with a, like a, like a mass producing. Manufacturer and they teamed up to create the uh, the Aqua Fox and uh, I'm not I'm only using it for like a day so I'm not going to sort of too, talk too much about it but so far you know it seems to be vaping quite nicely so well made tank as well uh, but you know there'll be a review coming on that in the in the future I'm going to try and get the um, I get a Rulu Rulo <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? I'm getting it wrong now because I watched um, Matt's uh, video the first Suck My Mod and he was calling it a Rolo. And uh, since say, ever since you've seen, like, I've been accidentally sort of doing a mixture of Rulu and, and Rolo and going Rulo. But so, uh, yeah, but um, I'm not too sure how it's actually pronounced now, but Matt's sort of definitely uh, bugged up my, um, my pronunciation of it. Another slight negative. Uh, with DNA 200, uh, it's a batch life isn't um, isn't fantastic. Um, you know, you're looking at a sort of good evenings worth of vaping, and then that's sort of pretty much it, really. If you're going to be sort of doing sort of fairly hardcore vaping anyway, um, but again, maybe that's something that I can improve in the uh, the software. Maybe I'm not too sure. I've not really sort of delved into it too much, apart from to put a little sort of custom graphic uh, on the screen when you press the fire button when it sort of initially turns on. And that's thanks to uh, my mate Julian, who sent over like an e-cig reviews one, and I did that. Okay, so I, I've not got a clue how long this has been running for. Um, just trying to look on my monitor. It doesn't, you just got a time code on there, which uh, I'm bothered to reset, so it's useless. Uh, but I'd imagine this is going on for far too long, and uh, hopefully um, it has been interesting and uh, not too boring. It has been sort of mainly uh, vapor related this time. Uh, once again, guys, you know, if you do have any uh, any questions or, or any topics you'd like me to discuss or any sort of suggestions for future videos, please leave it. Please leave your comments in the YouTube description box below, and I've got it right that time. Um, okay, so, you know, have a fantastic week. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.